Hey guys, welcome back to Comic Eden. Uh, I'm John Wise here with the review of the Star Wars Rogue One at Act. That's A T A C T. Um, as you can tell, this thing is pretty big. Um, it measures just slightly, maybe a few centimeters uh, less than in, uh, the original ad -AT toys that came out uh, back in the 70s and 90s. So, uh, this is the new uh, vehicle slash playset for the new Rogue One line that came out uh, back in December. So, a lot of going on with this thing, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, as you'll notice, I have three action figures here. These action figures actually come with the ADX. So we'll go ahead and I'll go over these first. First off, we have uh, the lead character here. Uh, I believe her name is uh, Ren. Uh, is basically just a repaint of the original figure. Uh, that, that came uh, mint on card. The only thing she's really missing uh, is her little scarf that was removable. Uh, there's a few different little paint decos here on her uh, legs. Other than that, it is the exact same figure. Um, she did come with an accessory here, which I'll go over. Uh, the articulation on these are pretty much going to be what you kind of expect from the new Star Wars uh, three-quarter line. So let's go ahead and go over um, the, uh, the articulation here, you got your head that moves from left to right. Uh, it is on a, on a ball joint, so you can get some head movement out of her. Goes up and down. Uh, arms do move forward and backwards. Uh, there is no waist articulation, and the legs do move up and down. That's it. Um, Sculpt-wise, it's a pretty decent-looking uh, sculpt for these figures. Um, the paint job on her is just, it's pretty cool. Um, I've never really had any issues with uh, any of the uh, Rogue One or the Force Awakens figures when they came out. I thought they were all really well done. Um, I was actually a fan of the five point articulation because um, I get it, it's the new Star Wars figures, but they kind of want to make it uh, fit in with the original vintage figures, I think, is what they were going for. So I'm okay with that. Uh, she did come with one accessory, her little pistol here. And the pistol is just like a silvery color. There is no actual, any painted details. And, and it, it fits in either a hand, really nice. Um, it is also made of kind of a soft plastic. Uh, cool thing is, on the side here we have a holster and the gun just fits right in her holster. And it fits really good too. I mean, it doesn't slide out. I mean, it does not come out. So that's pretty good. Nice and tight, fits with the figure. So, uh, next one I want to talk about here is, uh, I forget the name of this little astromech, uh, Imperial Droid, um, but he's really, really cool. Um, yes, he's just a repaint of R2-D2, uh, which we've got in almost every Star Wars line. Uh, he doesn't have pegs on his feet. He's just solid plastic. Um, I mean, but look at the shine, different tones of blacks and, and uh, dark silver and grays we've got on this figure. I mean, if you look really close, I don't know how well it comes out on camera or not, but the silver and like almost like the gun metal here is just, it's really shiny and sparkly. I mean, they did a good job on this, just this little Astro, a repainted R2-D2. Um, it does have some articulation. It does not have a third leg to come out, but its legs that it does have, they do move forward and backwards, and his head can move a full, all the way around. So, really cool. Um, I think this, as weird as it sounds, this might be my favorite figure out of the three figures that came with this thing. It just looks, and it's painted really cool. So, 
Next up, we have our Adact driver. Now, this is the one I'm going to have issues with as it gets face planted. Uh, first off, we'll go ahead and go over the sculpt and details. The sculpt and de uh, paint and everything is pretty okay on this guy. Um, I like the colors on him. Uh, you have a little the uh, imperial emblem right here on his head. I don't know where I'm supposed to. Um, he's got some little emblems here and in the back of his head here. And he does look pretty much just like, you know, he, re he reminds me more of a, like like the old like Stormtrooper drivers and ADAC drivers, which is what he's supposed to be. Um, my issue comes here when we get to the waist. His belt is really just a, it's a solid, non-giving plastic. I mean, we get a little flexibility there, but not a whole lot. And I'll tell you why this is a, complaint of mine when we get into the articulation. Uh, articulation wise, not too bad. This is, again, pretty much five points here. We got head move slightly side to side. It's really hard because of the bottom here. It does move slightly up and down. Uh, his arms do go up, down, all the way around. He does not have any waist articulation and his legs, here's the issue, can slightly move up and down but they're hindered because of this belt. Here's why this is an issue. He is the driver. When we get to the cockpit, he's supposed to be able to sit like this. As you can see right now, you can see his legs already moving down because of the hinderation of the belt. So but I haven't had any issues of him getting in the cockpit and closing the lid, but it'd still be nice if he fit in there just a little better. Uh, another issue I'm having is um, I tend to leave him in the cockpit, which is probably not a good idea as I found out. Because, if you notice when I picked him up, I had him leaning up against here. is because his legs have been in this position for so long, now he doesn't want to stand. And I've been trying to get him in a decent leg pose to try everything I can. And just, see, he's just falling right over here. Uh, he's a drunk ADAC pilot. Face first. Um, I've tried bending his legs back as far as I can, um, and I can get him to stand for a while, but as you can see, <laughs> he comes with his own action figure, drunk at act action feature. So um, I may have to leave him out and try just leaving his legs open for a while uh, like this, just you know, straight up and down to get him to maybe bend more, but yeah, he's not going to stand, that, which is kind of a bummer. It really is. I kind of wish they would have made a more softer plastic for the belt, or maybe even a removable belt. So, um, unlike the other stormtroopers, though, that we got in Force Awakens and in um, Rogue One, uh, you'll see he has the same blaster as them. He even has the same little peg that would normally be on the leg of uh, a stormtrooper to holster it. There, he doesn't. He has nowhere to holster it. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because there is a spot in this vehicle that will hold on to it and now we're going to get into the awesome features that this thing has all right so normally i save accessories and that towards the end but the accessories are actually part of the features on this thing so uh first off like all the other newer star wars vehicles this one takes advantage of the uh nerf gun uh features and this thing comes which means it shoots nerf darts um so this comes with four soft tipped nerf darts and they shoot uh, out of the front of here and I'll show you that in just a moment. Uh, it also comes with a cannon that actually fires uh, this little thing here and I'll try to... I'm an idiot. That's the dart. The button's up here. I'm due to my... I'm, I'm, I'm working with my mistakes. Okay, so anyway, the button for where this dart is up here uh, it does have movable handles, so whoever is short or tall can actually grip onto it. And it actually works really well, I'll show you that in a bit. Uh, but you push the button on top and it fires the dart. Uh, if you're smarter than the dart, you can figure that out right away. And it just loads here, clicks, and you're good to go again. Another really cool thing, and again, this is going to come into play in one of the features, is it actually comes with a, uh, like a grappling hook to slide, the, to slide down. And this is actually, believe it or not, three pieces. Uh, you got piece number one here. You got piece here that hooks on to, and I'll show you some things on here. 
but it hooks onto different uh, little um, clips, and it actually just kind of got real, real rope. And the third piece actually unclips from here, and it has a handle for the figure to hold onto, so it can just slide down. So, and I'll show you how that feature works here in just a little while. But you can go ahead and you can roll it back up. Got a little clap here. Clip it. You're good to go. So, all right. Um, now, so I might, let's get this out of the way. Um, I meant, I was talking about the ADAC driver, the drunk ADAC driver. Um, he fits right up on top, just like the original ADAC. You just pop the top open here, like so. Take the figure, bend the legs up like that, down, like in sitting position as best you can. Place him right inside, like so. That's about as far as you're going to get him to go in. Um, there we go. Uh, oh, you know what? I should point this out. This thing did have stickers, so if you'll look on the inside here on the side panels, um, and there's some also inside the ADAC itself, I'll go over. Those were a pain to put in, even, even for an adult like myself. So you might want to have an adult put those in if you're younger. If you're an adult, you're going to have to really work at uh, getting those in there. So he just sits in the seat just like that. And you notice this little side compartment here. That is where you're going to put your Nerf darts. You can store all four Nerf darts in here. They just fit in like so. And they're going to shoot out of this little hole here. When I, when I uh, end up showing you that feature here. Now if the darts get stuck, the cool thing is it's got this little side panel that comes right out and you could just kind of fiddle with them and then put that right right back in as long as the figure doesn't get in the way. They it clips right in there. Let's see if I can get him in there. Oh, there we go. And then just close the lid, like so. To note is these guns actually do rotate. They also move. And when we turn on the ad uh it'll actually, when we shoot the lasers, these will actually glow red. So. Okay. So that's that. Simple, right? Check this out. Now we come to the good stuff. This actually comes out and it stays in there really well. We've got some cla claps, clips here uh, that clip to the bottom of these little holes here so it doesn't really just keep sliding in and out. Uh, I'll go over this first. Uh, we have a little playability here and again we do have some stickers to apply which you can tell are probably all crooked because it was really difficult to put those in. Um, now, it looks like you're not going to have a whole lot of room, right? Well, they took care of that. On both sides, there's flaps that you can flip up. And now we can get in there and actually play with our figures. And there are multiple little pegs that you can use your figures on here. Like so. Um, but that's not the only thing. Okay, so you buy more darts, or you have little like uh, weapons or stuff you want to store. We have little compartments here. I'm actually going to use this to flip it open because <laughs> I have no nails. There we go. Here we are. And if you look inside, we have more pegs for more figures. You also notice this little hole here. This little hole here can fit our cannon. Just like so. And then the action figure can go in the, on one of the pegs and actually fire the cannon. Now the other side is the same way, it's got the little compartment here, and you can store weapons and missiles or extra nerf darts or whatever inside here. So again, really awesome, really cool, and it just claps really nice, just like that. And I guess I can go ahead and real quick pull that up so you can see it does the same thing. So with that comes this thing. It's not just a box, it's, it's a transport. You can put your other ADAC figures and uh, um, uh, other uh, 
uh, Imperial stormtroopers in here, and it has multiple pegs for multiple figures. It's got multiple holes. You can put your cannons here, here, you put them up here. It's like a little extra base. Now this is something I really want to show you. Remember I told you that the ADAC driver didn't have a holster for his gun. Again, problem solved. Check this out. They actually have spots for multiple weapons inside. So that is really cool. And again, this is like a little base. You can put a cannon here. There's even spots to on the other side. So this is really cool. And I'll show you why this is really cool. Remember the uh, hook thing I showed you? Okay, so we're going to take this, we'll unravel it, and up here you'll notice multiple different little spots to hook it up. Now this can get plugged in, say, hmm. down here. There we go. Now remember that handle that we have up here? Go ahead and disconnect that. Put that in your figure's hand. Like so. And now she can slide right down. And it works really well. Um, the holder, and then the cool thing is if you don't, most of the, like figures like her has really small hands. She could even probably go ahead and hold on to the rope itself, which in reality probably wouldn't be the best idea, rope burn and all. But I believe it would still work really well. There you go. See, now she's got rope burn on her hands, but you know, it still works. And again, um, you could fit multiple figures in here. I think I have at least. Uh, five figures that I store in here um, for when I'm not playing with my ad act. Uh, and again, there's multiple pegs. She doesn't have to necessarily stand on one to control the gun. So she doesn't really have to stand on a peg when she's holding on the gun because the gun holds her up. Now, I remember I told you there's no pegs on the uh, Astromech. It doesn't really need it. You can pretty much stand wherever. So, pretty cool. Um, and when you're done, um, I like to store these weapons on the little pegs here, just so I don't lose them and they're not moving around like crazy. That little wheel is driving me crazy. I can just roll that up. And then there you go, you don't, uh, you don't lose it. You have no problem pulling this back up with the weapons in there. I'll just like that. And then you just put this back in. Like so. Flat those back down. And your ad act is ready to deploy. Yes, deploy. Because this thing actually walks. It shoots. It's really cool. Uh, first off, uh, the button to turn it on is on the other side here. You're going to want to do that. Now this thing takes uh, four C batteries, which is weird because who uses C batteries anymore? But the on switch is going to be under here. You kind of have to feel for it. Ah. Uh, that's off. Now I got to turn it back on. So first up, okay, so there are two ways to, make, to use these things feature. First off, we have buttons back here. Now with the buttons, you can make this thing walk. Just push it once. That's best if you do this on the flat surface. Now you can push it a couple times, it'll walk a couple times. Or you could actually hold the button down and it'll just keep walking, but you'll have to hold it down. So other things this thing does is that you can make it turn its head.
you could also shoot its laser cannons. So if you look closely at these cannons when I fire them, they will glow red. I don't know how well that's going to come out on camera, but... So, and of course, its main big nerf feature. Boom! You die, rebel scum. <laughs> so, that's that. Now, big attraction to this, one of the big reasons why this thing has a hefty price, and I'll go over the original hefty price here in just a moment, is because you can attack your Bluetooth to this thing and do exactly what I just did, except from your phone. So first off, you need to go ahead and uh, you need to download the uh, Star Wars app. This one right here. Um, and I already had this booted up, ready to go. So that's what the screen looks like. You're going to want to hit Control. Now I turn the sound off on mine. I guess I can turn it on. There we go. And then you want to hit Connect to your Ad Act. Now, uh, you'll notice two options here. I actually am going to turn that off. Okay, I'm actually I'm going to turn that off. Uh, you'll notice two options. Controller and director. I'll go over director in just a moment because that's, a, that's one of my favorite features on this thing. We're going to go ahead and hit controller. And the screen will And there you have the same buttons that are on your uh, edX except now they're on your phone. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take this away. I'm going to show you now. So I'm going to make it move forward now from my phone. It works the same way. You hit it one time, it'll take a few steps. You click it a couple times. And you can see it walks really well, especially on a flat surface. Uh, now you can fire the lasers. And I want to show you something real quick on this app. On the app, there we go. Uh, you'll notice when I hit the lasers, you'll see the ad act here. It actually shows you shooting the lasers. Of course, it's facing at you, but uh, we can also move its head from here. And of course, we can still fire those Nerf darts. <laughs> so, there you go. Let me go ahead real quick and reload these darts so I can show you the director mode. Now, I've watched some reviews of this and everybody always skips the director mode. And again, to reload uh, your Nerf darts, have a little compartment next to your ad act driver. Put them in there, it only will hold four. Open it up. And now I'm gonna hit director. Now with director mode, you have, whoop, there we go. You have the same options as before, except now you can choose to do multiple things at once. You can choose them to walk a couple times. And notice when you do that, these icons here appear. Uh, you can make them shoot the lasers a couple times, move its head, and then fire the darts. When you're done, there's a play button right there. Hit play. And now your ad act will follow the directions that you just gave it to do. Oh, it's going to ask you if you want to. It's going to ask you to confirm to fire the darts. <laughs> so, um, hit yes. Oh, <laughs> I'll bring. Bring this up in a moment. It's going to finish walking, it's going to move, fire, it's going to move. And then it's going to ask you to confirm to fire darts. Hit yes. And it'll ask me again. I guess that's for safety reasons. <laughs> so, it's still pretty cool. And you could actually, I guess you could also make a little video sequence of this. So let's see what this does. I don't know what it's gonna. Oh, this is for the FX mode, which I have not messed with yet, so we're not gonna do. This is a really fun, fun toy. 
Um, I don't really have any complaints about it other than the ADAC driver itself. Um, another com now that is of the toy. Now, if these are still available, um, these, these came out around November, December. The price tag on this was really hefty at $299.99. Um, I waited till after Christmas at Target. These things went down to 50% off. Um, so I managed to um, pay 75 out of my pocket. My girlfriend pitched in to pay, pay another 75 So I, that's how I managed to pay $150 for this thing. Uh, but it's a really fun toy. The $150 price tag, okay, I could see that being worth it. $300, not so much. Uh, for three hundred dollars, I'd rather go get a, maybe a PS4, you know, used somewhere. But if you had the hundred and fifty, definitely worth it. Um, if nothing else, if you don't own an ad act or an ad at, this is a nice compensation for it. Um, and like I said, it's about as big as uh, one of the original ad acts. Um, and the playability is cool. You can definitely uh, pose your figures on it and uh, have a nice background. Um, for your figures. The Bluetooth feature alone is really fun. I find myself chasing my cat with this thing. Um, I don't shoot the darts at him anymore because now he, he's learned, actually learned to catch the darts and take off with them. So, uh, and, the, and I do, because the darts don't hurt. They're very soft tip. You can shoot them at yourself and not get hurt. So don't, don't I don't want PETA commenting that, you know, he's shooting his cat, boycott the videos. Um, but no, very soft tipped. I wouldn't have done that otherwise. Um, but I do chase my cat with it. It's really fun. Um, I have a lot of my old Star Wars figures, my vintage ones, for instance. They go really well with this. So um, if you could find one for the $150 mark, a lot of them have um, gone down in price. I suggest going for it. $300, that's really up to you uh, if you want to spend that much on a toy. And that's really all that is, is just a toy. A really fun toy, but a toy nonetheless. So, um, these are still available at some stores. Um, maybe, maybe we'll find them even less online. So, uh, yeah. I suggest grabbing one. Highly recommend. Five stars out of five. So, stay tuned for um, Shannon's History of Voltron. <laughs> If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like, comment below, and share with your friends. <laughs> I hate you.